welcome back to Turntable Guy. Um, I'm pretty excited today. Um, on the bench here is my personal Techniques uh, SLQ2. Uh, this is a very nice example of the Q2. Uh, it uh, was purchased off uh, a gentleman who owned it uh, since he bought it brand new and he wasn't playing records anymore, an older gentleman. And I got it for a song and a dance, very, very cheap. So um, I uh, didn't have to do a lot to it. Just lubed the bearing and checked it over and um, you know, it was good to go. Uh, this is a great workhorse turntable. Um, if you wanna see a little bit more of it, uh, I did a video earlier in the year where I uh, have a look at the SLD2 and the SLQ2. And I compare these uh, two very similar models. And, uh, you know, this, uh, it's one of my more popular videos, actually, because um, they're such, they're such similar turntables, right, that uh, people wonder what's the difference, other than the quartz, which is what the, the Q stands for, right? Uh, but the Q2 def definitely has uh, a higher build quality. And um, just one thing I wanted to address is uh, I did get a comment on that video uh, where I state that the SLD2 has a plastic plinth. Okay, it's basically 100% plastic as far as the construction of the turntable. Um, you know, it's techniques, techniques, uh, low noise, uh, compound, uh, whatever it is. It's plastic, right? So, but it's 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 still very very high quality. And I mentioned that the SLQ is an aluminum plinth, and someone decided to you know to uh, challenge that and say no it's it's uh it's it's not aluminum i believe the, the quote was get real so anyway um i am being real this is not a plastic deck this is metal i can feel it it's cold to the touch it's uh not steel therefore you know i'm thinking they must be aluminum um techniques made a lot of turntables out of that uh, aluminum compound so anyway um Ignore those types of comments. People like to shoot off their mouths when they don't know what they're talking about. Um, the Q series, at least the Q2, Q3, are a metal uh, plant, okay? And what I believe is aluminum. But that's not why we're here today. We're here because, like most of these uh, turntables, I have the dreaded broken hinge tab. Okay, and you can probably see it right there. This one's okay. This one's busted off. The reason for that is that the hinges on the back of this series, they're, they're very strong. And uh, when, you, when you lower the, uh, the, the dust cover, it puts an immense amount of stress on these tabs. And after time, the plastic weakens and it snaps right off. Now, this one will still kind of stay closed um, because there's there's enough uh, there's just enough tab on here to kind of make it work. But I don't leave this turntable in service because of this issue. So um, we're not going to work on the turntable today. Um, as I mentioned in that uh, uh, D versus Q video. There are people who are uh, 3D printing uh, new hinge tabs for these dust covers. And uh, I've been looking for, you know, a, a good quality one. Um, unfortunately, 3D printing is plastic as well. So I'm wondering, you know, how long do these last, right? So um, there are gentlemen who are doing it in aluminum. And that's what I've got here. So uh, this kit uh, comes from China. Um, it's a nice kit. It comes with two new hinge tabs and they are uh, made out of aluminum, very light. Okay, and they're meant to uh, replace the existing tabs and it also comes with the hardware that you need. So you got four, uh, four screws, four nuts, four washers type of thing, right? And um, you know, it's just a matter of uh, doing the surgery to get it done. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I've been waiting to do this for a long time. Uh, my D2 still has the, the hinge tabs intact. 
So I'm not going to do that one, but uh, this one has a broken one, so I thought, um, let's definitely film this because there's a lot of people who have this issue with this turntable. So anyway, um, let's, uh, let's get the tools we need. We'll get the turntable off the bench, and uh, we'll get going on this. All right, what I've done here is I've, uh, I've masked off the area to be cut. Just in case your hand slipped, you might want to mask even further, depending how steady your hand is. Um, if you see that, okay. So I just mask off the area. I also masked here, and I masked the inside a little bit. I mean, you can't uh, you can't mask too much, right? Um, I spent a lot of time polishing this turn turntable uh, dust cover, so I really don't want to have it scratched. So. And what we're going to be using today is a uh, like a Dremel type machine. Um, this one's from Canadian Tire. It's a Mastercraft brand, but they're all the same. <clears throat> these uh, these suckers can be dangerous, especially when you're using a cutoff wheel. Um, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely wear eye protection because little shards of crap are going to hit you in the face. Okay, there's there's no doubt about it put on eye protection okay so that uh, that's our safety tip for the day and uh, there's there's nothing pretty about this um, it, it's gonna be you know basically my plan of attack is to come from the top and go down um, and cut it right about there okay uh, and hopefully you know I'll, I'll take off a little bit of maybe maybe what I'll do actually I'll, I'll I'll remove a little bit from the front first and then as I get closer I don't want to gouge the existing um, dust cover <clears throat> then I'll, what I'll probably do is I'll switch to a grinding wheel and then just grind it down the hinge itself um, it's going to sit on the outside of the table right so it's uh, It'll sit like uh, like this. So you are going to see your uh, your gouge marks from the inside of the dust cover, right? I've seen some uh, new uh, plastic 3D printed models um, that cover the inside and the outside, so they 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 go. Um, around the dust cover so they would ha actually hide any scraping marks so maybe that's an option too um, I just like the fact that these are aluminum I just I know it's not gonna break again right so and I mean if you really wanted to you could put a little bit of uh, tape here or something just to to, to hide the uh, gouge marks maybe some some gray tape just to match that you wouldn't really notice it right so anyway um, Let's plug the sucker in and uh, do some cutting. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, get this close here so we can see what's going on. Don't worry, I will center it as best as I can. So you can see it, but I need to be able to, to work too. So. <clears throat> Kind of good. Yeah, we're kind of good, right? We'll go low speed first. notice is that um, while it's cutting the plastic will get hot it'll start to melt right so uh, you're going to notice that your wheel might get a little gummy as you're cutting
I'm getting hit in the face something fierce. I can't cover it because I want to be able to see. taking a little break here uh this is a messy job uh, plastic is going everywhere all over me all over my head and it's freaking loud i'm just wondering when i should start grinding I mean, I probably have a lot more control with a grinding wheel than with a cutter, but uh, I'm going to go a little bit closer. All right, you see what I'm doing here? We're gonna get this cut off. I'm gonna come back and we'll do some drilling. So I've been uh, grinding a little bit, and uh, grinding is a lot nicer than, uh, than excuse me, than uh, than cutting. Um, I'm just taking my time, and I'm just taking it down a little bit at a time. You know, I just wanna, I don't wanna leave any uh, major ridges or anything. But we're getting there, you know. Just take your time with it. You know, you want it to sit flat, obviously. But you're starting to get the idea that's what, uh, what's going to happen here, right? We'll put that on, and we'll, uh, we'll drill a couple holes and get it mounted. But uh, I'm going to continue grinding, and we'll get this nice and flat. Oh, this is the grinding wheel I'm using right here. Just a, a stone grinder. Alrighty, so that's the uh, grinded out section there. I've got this tab inserted right now. And I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this with, with one hand just to show you what I'm going to do here, but I'm going to give you an idea. So what we want to do, so this goes in there. And what we want to do is we want to mark exactly where we're going to, um, to mark our holes, right? And I wanted to do it with, with this tab fully inserted that way. So I, I got to do this off camera because uh, I can't hold it. So I'm going to line up this uh, by pushing the hinge forward. So I'm going to physically push the hinge forward to when it touches the, uh, the dust cover. I'm going to make two marks with a Sharpie and uh, we'll start drilling. So I made a couple marks here. And that's going to be where we're going to, uh, I'm going to leave the masking tape on as well. It, uh, it'll prevent your uh, drill bit from sliding around. It'll bite quickly and it'll go through, obviously. So we're going to uh, line it up like that. And you want the uh, bottom of the hinge to sit flush with the bottom of the, uh, with the dust cover, right? And then uh, I'll make those uh, red marks a little bit bigger and then... Uh, Sorry, we'll start uh, drilling away. 
Now I'm a real big proponent of um, not using the drill bit size, your final drill bit size as your first drill. Um, uh, I would highly recommend going with a smaller bit first and working your way up. So I'm going to go in first with a, uh, I'm not even sure what size this is, uh, 730 seconds I think it is. So it's uh, pretty small. So here we go. Get it to bite first. Don't go crazy first. If you, if you have a, a variable speed uh, trigger on your drill, nice and light first, okay? You don't want the you don't want the drill bit to wander, and that the masking tape helps with that as well. Okay, now I'm using a one eighth. Again, go slow. This is going to bite hard, eh? See that okay? Let the drill do the work. Don't push hard. Think we're there yet i would like the uh, hole just a little bit bigger than the uh, screw um, that way there's just a little bit of play just in case you want to adjust them a little bit because you're going to clamp down on these with a bolt right in a washer so they're not going to go anywhere so if they're i have a feeling the screw will, pro whoops, will probably go through now <laughs> No, it won't. Well, you could probably thread it in, but uh, we're not doing that. We want, to, want a little bit more size. Um, where's our hinge? Here it is. So my guess is the final size will be a 7 64th because it, uh, it just fits in nicely. So I want my hole the same size. And uh, this marker will come off with a little bit of uh, alcohol or WD-40. All right. So let's chuck up our, uh, our final drill bit. Hopefully my battery doesn't die. I, I, this, I had this drill for a long time and the battery's starting to lose its charge. So...
I'm going to be cleaning plastic shards out of my uh, workroom here for a week. Yeah, they're everywhere. All right. So it's nice to have a little drill bit set like this where you can uh, yeah, various sizes and stuff. Okay. So let's see how our uh, our bolts fit now. Very nice. And here's our hinge. There's just enough to get through the other side. All right. Uh, Let's uh, move some of this stuff and we'll pull off our tape, see what kind of ugliness we have underneath. Shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. Yeah, so. I basically uh, cut off what I could, and then, like I said, it was nice working with the uh, with the grinding wheel. A lot more control, and it's just plastic, right? And it, it I felt like I wasn't getting as much uh, uh, shrapnel in my face, right? So, hopefully this focuses, because... I don't know about the depth of field here. Anyway, let's uh, let's see how it goes. So what do you got? You got uh, oh, we have one, two, three, four washers. Probably put those on the inside. So we'll go uh, screw and then washer and nut on the inside. These are not threaded or locking nuts. If you want to put a lock washer, it wouldn't probably be a bad idea. You get the idea what this is going to look like when it's done, right? And see how I, I made that hole just a little bit bigger, so I've got a little bit of wiggle room, just in case I, I need to move the hinge left, right, up, or down. So that's why you want the hole just a touch, touch bigger than the actual um, screw size. I'm pretty excited. This is uh, a long time coming. And I know uh, a lot of people are going to take advantage of this product. Whether you go the 3D, 3D print route or you go the metal route, like this one. The 3D printed route looks a little better, I'll be honest with you. As far as uh, the hinges look, they look a little bit more original. I'm not going to crank these down right now. I just want to kind of see where it fits. When I'm done, I'll uh, I'll put a, a nut driver on the other side and we'll tighten it down. I'm just excited to see how it works. Let's grab our SLQ2. There it is. Can you see that? Good. And uh, here we go. Ah, oh, fantastic. I love it. I love it. I'm going to show you how that looks like. There you go, folks. Awesome. You see how there's just a little bit of a gap here? And the gap is the same over here. There's our, our old plastic hinge and hinge tab, right? And there's our new 
hinge tab, aluminum. Uh, I, believe, I don't know if these are plastic, I think these are plastic, but uh, hopefully this doesn't go and crack now, but uh, yeah, happy, 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 happy. And uh, let's see what it looks like from the inside here. One sec. So that's what you're looking at from the inside, right? So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see with this model, you're gonna see a little bit of that, uh, you know, where we did our uh, surgery. But uh, like I said, you could you could maybe cover this up with a little bit of a uh, little bit of gray tape or something, whatever. Um, I could care less. I think this is phenomenal. Um, I can use my my Q2 again without worrying about it going snap. How awesome is that? Anyway, um, that's the kit. It's available on eBay. That's the part number. And uh, it was like $16 US, which came out uh, with shipping to like uh, 20 bucks Canadian, right? So really worth the time and effort. Uh, just get ready for some plastic shards in your face unless you've got a better way of hacking off that hinge than I do um, This is a success really happy Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I really hope you found this uh, useful and I hope all you guys with uh, these uh, techniques uh, dust covers with these uh, terrible hinge tabs get your tables fixed Thanks for watching turntable guys uh, turntable guy guys and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.